What's happening, people? It's your boy Trill here again with another video on yoga. Now, this video is going to be on the basics of proper alignment and form. I wanted to do this, even though I say it in the in the videos that I do. I wanted to break it down a little more. All right. So, in your alignment and in your form, the poses were made thousands, millions, however many years ago by the ancient sages of Egypt and India thousands of years ago for a, proper, for a proper reasoning. It would be for the muscles, the bones, the cells within that area, the breath that is going in and through and the flowing of how the instructor is teaching at that moment in time and for the proper alignment of the mind within. When your instructor or myself, if I'm your instructor, if they are saying that they need to, if you need to do a certain thing, envision it in your mind first. You'll get used to them as they teach, but envision it in your mind first. Like one that I say, I know for sure, uh, warrior one and warrior two. For warrior one, I usually say, and I'm gonna get up and do these. Your foot's gonna be in a slight V shape, but your heels are gonna be aligned, so the bottom of the palms are the heels. Example. Your heels are going to be here and your your foot is not going to be in an L shape just like for warrior two. It's going to be at a slight angle, making sure the feet are spread out as much as possible where that back leg is straight as possible and the right leg or the front leg has the knee over the ankle or on top of the ankle and not over it and slightly behind it the person is stiff or of that nature. Uh, for warrior two, L shape, your foot, the back foot is gonna have the toes pointing out, facing the same way as the hips are out, as well as the right foot going straight. Right foot is gonna be straight, same as before, but the heels are still gonna be aligned. For another example, it would be keep the elbows tucked in tight, exactly how it looks on me right now. Tight push-up form, elbows are gonna be tucked in right into the torso, hands right here next to the shoulders. That'll be for the chaturanga most likely. Feet, ankles and toes to touch when you're standing together. I know everybody ain't made the same. Everybody can't do what everybody does or everybody's body does, especially mine. But you wanna meet your feet and ankles close as possible when you're standing. Ankles and toes to touch. Feet are firm into the ground. Anchored into the ground. Legs tall and firm, not buckled at the knees. If your knees are buckled, you can lose form. You want to make sure you're standing tall and firm. See how tense my shoulders are? Shoulders are back and down. Relax. Arms to the side, fingers wide. This is how your mountain pose should look from the back. Profile. Spine tall, shoulders and chin at a horizon. Having an equal, equal even flow flowing through the nose and out the nose. it from the side just how I did with my hands at a slight angle and the back foot is not going to go straight like that with the foot flat onto the ground naturally so with this slight angle and the heels aligned all I'm gonna do is scoot this foot back make sure my shoulders and hips are facing forward Torso isn't leaning to the front or to the back, side or side. Torso is tall and straight, keeping the spine tall. Shoulders and hips are at the front. Arms are going to be up or hands. 
hands to heart center, depending on what your <coughs> excuse me, truck instructor says. And up. Inhale through the nose, out the nose. Make sure that you're checking out the knee and that it's not over the ankle and not too far behind unless your leg is stiff and you're working on your flexibility. You want to make sure that knee is stacked on top of the ankle as much as possible. Foot is flat on the ground and the foot is at a slight angle. Boom. So front here, you're going to look at it and it's going to be, you shouldn't even be able to see my heel. And you can't. You might be able to see my toes, but you're not able to see my heel. Same on this side. Boom. You're not be able to see my toes. I mean, you'll be able to see my toes, but not my heel. Shoulders and hips square, arms up. So from this, warrior one, inhale. Exhale, bring your arms down to counterbalance. Open the torso, hip, and the left foot to warrior two. Now, the foot's gonna be in the L shape. The heel did not leave. Back leg is still straight. This leg is still straight. All we did was open the hip. Hips and torso is to the front. Arms to top, counterbalance. Gaze is looking bad. Down the middle finger, deep breaths. And on shifting things, shifting poses, you want to make sure that you shift properly and not sloppily. Make sure you look and keen to the words of your instructor. So I might say something like inhale, exhale, drop the left hand to the left leg, right arm over the head for reverse warrior. In doing so, make sure when you lean back, you're leaning aligned with that leg. Going back, you don't want to lean to the sides. It's going to give injury to the lower back. And what we're doing is preventing and strengthening our chances of not having injury. Back to warrior two, inhale. Exhale, right forearm to the right thigh. Left arm over the head for extended side angle. Or behind the back for myself. Everything is aligned. This arm is aligned. It's not curving down. It's not going up. It's going to be as straight as possible. For the next one, you're going to drop the right hand to the outside of the right leg. Left hand goes toward the ceiling. You're going to gently soften the right leg, making it straight for a triangle pose. This is difficult for most people, but with it, you can keep the knee bent, but in it, you're going to make sure the torso is not going to the left or right like before. You're gonna make sure you're pushing up straightly, strictly for the leg, listening to your instructor. Protecting the lower back, strengthening the lower back. Inhale, exhale, pushing toward two. Now I'm gonna do this side. Inhale. So open the hip, foot, and torso to warrior two. Mm. Heels are still aligned. Everything is still aligned. Inhale. Exhale. Left forearm to the left thigh. Right arm over the head, extended side angle. Inhale. Exhale, left hand to the left ground, right hand to Left hand to the left, outside of the left leg, right hand to the ceiling. <clears throat> Straighten the left leg slowly, making sure everything is still stacked. Inhale, exhale, bend the knee. Turn back around with the right hand. Just step up. that. Now, we're going to be doing <clears throat> a Nantanasana. That's laying on the side. I call it a TV pose. Looking at the left elbow or the right, whichever side you're on, as you're looking at your elbow, 
making sure that it's straight, you want to make sure it's aligned with the rest of your body. Your legs should not be out to the front or the back. Everything should be aligned. And as you're looking down, you want to make sure your hips, knees, and ankles are stacked on top of each other, making sure the leg is not, the leg on top isn't on top, in the front, or in the back. Making sure everything is aligned. Gently raise the toes up and gently lift the right leg up, reaching for the toes with the index finger and thumb to the big toe and gently gradually pull the right leg in as much as possible, keeping the leg straight as you gaze down the left leg like before. Make sure the leg is not, the right leg is not over or in the back, but aligned with the left leg. Everything is in alignment. Inhale. Exhale, drop the leg down. Extend the arms out, roll onto the back. I'm just gonna do this side to make myself even. Arms straight, head behind the skull, making sure the knees, ankles, and hips, knees, and ankles are stacked on top of each other. I usually bring the left hand in front of the belly button, toes to the ceiling, gently lift up. Reaching for the index finger, reaching for the thumb with the index finger and thumb, looking down the right leg. Left leg is aligned with it. And if I were to turn, my right elbow and arm is aligned with the rest of the body. Inhale. Exhale, drop down. Extend the arms out, roll on to the back. <clears throat> now for a bridge. Arms to the sides of the body. If you're able to, you can grab your ankles. Make sure the heels are into the glutes as much as possible. Feet are going to be shoulder width apart. And with your knees and toes, always make sure your toes are pointing in the same direction as your knees and your knees are pointing in the same direction as your toes for proper alignment. That's also in when you're doing your squats. <clears throat> so for your bridge, Relax the neck, shoulders, and arms, and back. Arms steady, firm into the ground. Inhale. Exhale, thrust the hips upward, scooting the shoulder blades into each other, thrusting the hips up as much as possible, squeezing the glutes together. I'm gonna bind my fingers, interlacing them underneath the arms, thrusting the hips out, keeping the chin tucked into the chest with no turning. Deep breaths. Inhale, exhale, gently drop the hips down, untuck the shoulder blades. Straighten the legs out. I'm going to sit up. One last thing <clears throat> for the spinal twist. With your legs straight, or if you keep your knees bent, how, depending on how flexible you are. I'm going to keep this leg straight from more common practitioners and those those that are more novice spine, sitting up tall spine straight foot flat onto the ground you're going to scoop your heel into the glute as much as possible you should look like the pictures that you see Egyptians doing or the perfect yogi that you see in a magazine or on Instagram you're going to keep the right leg cross it over the left gently Roll onto the hips slightly. Right hand goes behind the back. Left elbow onto the outside of the right knee. Gazing over the right shoulder, flexing the left foot up. S simply twisting the spine. Deep breaths. Straighten the right leg out. On this side. Spine tall, shoulders back and down, heel into the glute as much as possible, crossing the left over, rolling slightly onto the right hip, left hand behind the back, right elbow onto the outside of the left knee, right foot flexed up, gazing over the left shoulder, deep breath.
slowly release. And even sitting in Sukhasana, easy style position. I'll give the profile view first. <clears throat> Legs cross, relaxing the hips and knees. The spine tall. Hands into receptive mode, hands to heart center, hands to the knees. Or throwing up a mudra or whatever you feel and know what is what you're doing for your practice. Shoulder and chin at a horizon, eyes are gonna be closed, most likely in a meditative state. Deep breaths through the nose, out the nose. And the idea is to keep your eye focused to the middle of the forehead and focus on the breath as the body relaxes into the meditation, into the pranayama concentrating the energy in and throughout all the parts of the body from the, from the crown to the soles of the feet and from the soles of the feet back to the crown. And when you feel down, feel like you're sinking, the idea is to be aware is where yoga is, to be aware and to know and to feel it and to gently align yourself back mentally and don't be herky-jerky. Feel where you need the alignment and where you need the adjusting and mentally do so. And the men as you mentally do it, physically will follow. Alright, so that's a quick video on some basic alignment that you can do in yoga or in your stretching. I'll definitely do more basic things in the future because I didn't do all video or I didn't do all the poses necessary. And it's just needed. You can go through a video and do flows of several different professional yogis or just yogis that you feel like are the best. But Breaking, giving the time to truly break something down is going to help somebody figure it out and make sure that their injury is prevented and their form is proper in what they're trying to do. More videos to come. I appreciate y'all. Trill, love, stay high. Remember, peace, not apart, but together.